Hello, it's Dr. Abstract, and we're here with Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. This is an add-on tutorial where we're going to look at a matching game. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And we've done matching games before, so under examples here, under the collections, we have the Zim Bits. And Zim Bits are 64 little examples. So you can turn on the images here. 64 little examples of common interactive things that we do. One of those happened to be right here, the matching game where we're taking a triangle and matching it with that and a rectangle. Oh, we got it wrong. This is a square. So this was a matching game. And when we look at the code here, this was done quite some time ago in Zim. It's been updated to a recent Zim. Which version is that? Uh, zero 01, we're now on zero 02. But there's a message here saying, hey, we've redone these a few times. And one of the examples is on code pen. So I'm going to copy that example right there. And here's the example up on code pen where we've added a little string. Ooh, look at that. So we can, burp, yay, and an emitter. And here's a circle, and that's updated there. So this is nice and visual, that kind of matching. And it's got a replay. There was a little bit of an animation there and a replay. And all of that stuff adds up. Like the matching itself isn't all that difficult, and we're going to go through this and animate. So basically, taking uh, we're using pizzazz to get these patterns in the background. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to take most of this, uh, which is still older uh, again. So if we look at the settings, this is under JavaScript. This is Zim 10. So that's a little bit old as well. So what I've done is I've updated the code here and brought that into Animate. So it's basically the same, but now inside of Animate. And that's what we're going to look at. All right. So here is Animate. And here, indeed, is the code in there. We're getting it ready, and we're going to look through this code. So we're not going to type it together, but we'll look through it. Let's just have a look and see what it, it, what it makes us. So I go Control-Enter there, and we've got the matching game, these shapes animated in. Uh, a request on YouTube was to make the matching game where labels would match shapes. And so instead of making shapes match shapes, we've just adjusted those to a label square. Hmm. Ah, okay. And a circle. Oh, got it wrong. Circle. Yeah. And a triangle. All right. So this gives you the basics of the matching game along with the, a replay, which then animates back into place and new order comes up here. Um, all right. So let's see how what the code looks like. When we do bring in Zim, Adobe's got a loop global function or global, sorry, global variable of some sort. So we chose not to overwrite that automatically. But if you do want to use a Zim loop, which this code uses, then we're saying that the global loop will be the Zim loop. Or whenever you want to use a Zim loop, you could just use Zim loop. But this makes it easier for us. We're applying a style to things. <laughs> so we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have style, which is very much like CSS, but here on the canvas. So the, uh, this is publishing to the canvas, which is an HTML tag. Um, we can't really style things inside that HTML tag. We could only style the whole outer HTML tag, but with Zim, we can. We, we do style like things here. And this is an object literal, which comes from programming. We've been using this in programming for ages in JavaScript. So it's really CSS that copied um, our object literal, not, <laughs> but whatever. Okay, so um, we're styling some things which are about to be made. And those are the objects that, so we're calling this an object list. These are the things that we're going to be dragging. And then there's a targets list. And the targets list are the things that we're dragging to. Okay, we've used Zim labels, but you're welcome to use um, an Adobe, Adobe text. Anything that you would make in Adobe and put on, on the stage, for instance, uh, you would have to Zimify. So we've got other tutorials on how to do that. 
and also how to set all of this up. Maybe before we forget, because we always forget, how we set this up in the first place is under the more settings here. So I'm going to just click on the stage under more settings. We choose HTML and JavaScript right there. And we imported the Zim Shim. The Zim Shim comes from a zip file. And there's the Zim Shim. Um, now it's able to use Zim as well, which all exports to CreateJS, which is what Zim is built on. So that's why all this works. And there's other tutorials on how to set all that up. But basically, that was it. We have to get, well, I'll show you quickly where to get the Zim Shim. It's here on the Zim site. So if we go back up to the main Zim site right here under the code section, scroll on down. It's not interactive animation. That's how to use uh, sprites. It's this one right here. Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. And if you press that, here's where you grab the zip file. And there's all the earlier tutorials, including a tutorial on how to get all this stuff set up. OK, so that should handle that. And here we are back to our current tutorial. Yay! <laughs> all righty. So we've made these pink. Oh, the other ones were blue. So this was slightly uh, color, the, the color white of this. OK, color pink of that. So you see what we've done there is that if we set a color, that's going to change all of the colors of the fonts to white. But now we want these shapes and we want all those shapes to have a color of pink. So we're just adjusting the color uh, property of the style that we set. That's one way to do it. But, um, you know, whatever. On we go. So there's a rectangle, a circle, and a triangle. And like I said, we could zimify any movie clips that you might have on the stage. Then we can start using them in a similar way. As a matter of fact, we're tiling to get this effect. So we're using the zim tile to make these three things go across and these three things go across. You could just start with all this stuff right on the stage as movie clips um, with instance names. And then you would zimify the instance names and you wouldn't have to tile anything because you place them. So uh, that would be up to you. This came from when we're not using animate. And so therefore to position things, we use tile to do that. So sorry, I hope that's OK. I mean, if you're a pretty decent coder, it should be kind of obvious what you're needing to do. If you're not so hot on code, then you're welcome to ask, OK? You can come into the zimjs.com slash slack. That's where we have an animate channel. And you can ask there. You could ask in the Adobe forums as well. And we'll try and you know watch out for you there. OK. Um, so we're then looping through the object list. So here's the trick. If we want these two things to match up eventually, then what we're going to do, we're going to end up scrambling this one, the targets. We could have scrambled them both or scrambled only the objects. But anyway, we, we leave these the same all the time. We're going to scramble these. And then when we drag and drop them, and when we drop it on the other, we want to know if that's the right one. So here's the trick. Before we scramble them, they're both in arrays, we're going to loop through the object list, which is here. Each time we're given, this is the Zim loop, each time we're given the object that, that's there and we're given an index number. We then are going to set the object.match. So we're, we're setting a property on each one of these, a custom property called match. This is made up. We made it up in JavaScript. We can just add a property if we want. It's dynamic. So we're making a, a custom property called match. And that's going to be the same as the target list, whatever is in the target list, at i. So i is the index of the object. So i is 0 now then we're going to set the match of this object to the target list at 0, which is the rectangle. When i is 1, it's going to be the circle label. We're going to set it to the target list at 1, which is the circle. And again, here when it's 3, or 2, sorry, when i is 2, uh, 0, 1, 2, then we're going to set it to the target list, which is the triangle. So basically, it's saying there's a property on here called match that is the rectangle. There's a property on here called circle, or sorry, match <laughs> that is the circle. And there's a property on here called match that is the triangle. 
You see how this could help us later? When we drag and drop it and find out if it's hitting, whatever it's hitting, we ask for its, its match property. And if the match property is what we were dragging, then we win, you know, that's good, yay. So that's the trick to get these to match. And then we go and shuffle. So this is the Zim shuffle. We go and shuffle the target list. And true, uh, we just added that actually to make it easier. In, in the code pen example, we did some things to make sure that when we shuffled the list, it wasn't the same as when it started, because that's a possibility with shuffle, you're just randomly mixing them. Well, they could get randomly mixed and actually be the same as what they started out. It's not very often, but well, I suppose it depends on how many things you have in the list. Uh, but anyway, we had some, you know, a little bit of complicated code to, to stop that from happening. It had a while loop and it's like, Arg. so what we did is we moved that code just for you guys. We moved it into Zim, into the shuffle so that eh, we realized, oh, maybe it'd be handy if we made it. So when we shuffled, we could say, don't make it the same. And so we've added a, a parameter there. And when you set that to true, it means it's going to shuffle it, but it won't be the same. If you want it to be the same. Sometimes you want to, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever given tests in school or like written exams and stuff. And sometimes you are really, really tricky and go, ha ha ha, match this order. And the order is correct, you know, <laughs> that uh, psych. <laughs> but anyway, if you want the order to be possibly the same, then just don't put the true there. All right. So we shuffle it. And what that does is it mixes the target list. So they're now in a different order. And then what we're doing is we're doing that tiling that we've got here. Uh, yeah, that, that um, if you had things on the stage, how would you reposition them on the stage? Yeah, okay. Well, you might want to consider um, the Zim tile then, because here we are dynamically placing things on the stage using a tile. So we're basically saying, what do we want to tile? Tile, by the way, was built initially for art, <laughs> like the tiles of Gaudi, you know. <laughs> so the tiles for art were, were made so you would take one thing and you keep on repeating it. You, you tile it, basically. Um, and that one thing, we can use these things called ZimV value, or ZimV parameters to sort of treat that one thing that we're tiling a little bit differently. For instance, if we put in an array of things, it would randomly pick from that array and tile them and make art. If we put in a series, it would tile them in order. If it, um, anyway, there, uh, when we tile things as well, we can use the ZimV values and say the color of the circle. We could always tile a circle, but pass in an array of colors and it would pick from the array of colors in the same kind of way. So all that was built for dynamic art. Oh, wonderful. Well, here we are not really tiling dynamic art. We're doing the sort of more mundane, treating the tile like a table so that we can position things in a grid. <laughs> you know, just things that we want to stay as, as they are. So we have a different setting right here called true. So what we're tiling here is the stuff in the array, three columns, one row. This is the spacing in the in the horizontal spacing in the X, and this is the spacing in the, the vertical in the Y. So we don't really care about that because we've only got one row. So we're doing three columns, 100 pixels apart. This parameter says, don't randomly pick from that, but rather um, we want to tile them in order and keep them as they were. <laughs> so that's another thing that the tile did is it would clone things. So if you tile the circle, it had to make more circles. Right? So it had to clone them. And if we just passed in an array, it would naturally just, uh, if we didn't put true there, it would pick from that array and clone a whole bunch of them because sometimes it might pick the same one twice. So it has to clone each time. If we clone each time, we might lose that special match property that we had. Remember we had the match property? When you clone, it doesn't nat naturally take custom properties like that. It just remakes the original object in a sense. So anyway, true will solve all of that for us. It will mean just, hey, take from that array in the order of the array and don't bother cloning because these are things that we want to keep there. Anyway, uh, a little bit complicated, but <laughs> try, try not to worry too much about it. Uh, that was just a bit of a history about that. So we're basically tiling that in three columns, one row with a spacing of 100. 
Then we position the tile. That is, we position it zero from the center and 200 from the top by default. If we put top there, uh, that would be that would be the default. And we're going to see that we use the bottom down here. So we'll see how that works. And set the alpha of zero to start on that. And then we're animating in all of those shapes as they go. So it's just sort of like, don't see it to start wait 0.5 seconds, and then animate into a, an alpha of one. So that's how we're animating in the tile. We have other tutorials on this kind of stuff. So yeah, go back and check those if you want. And then here we are tiling the objects, much the same way. We're tiling the things in the list, or in the objects list. We've got three of them. This time our spacing is 50. And we're going to set drag on that. So that allows us to drag any of the objects in there. If you wanted to drag the whole tile, you would put all colon true there. And then it would drag the whole thing, basically. Uh, but it's nice to have, by default, if you put a drag on a container, tile's just a container, then it will drag anything in it individually, like 100 monsters container of 100 monsters, dot drag. It would just drag whichever monster you, you um, picked up. <laughs> Yay. All right, and we're positioning this time, we're positioning it 150 from the bottom. So zero from the center and 150 from the bottom. And we're turning off the style so it doesn't affect anything else that we're, that we're building. With style, you have options in here to specify what kind of object you're styling, like, hey, I'm styling a tile, or I'm styling a rectangle, or I'm styling a label. And to do that, you would just do something like this, uh, label, uh, colon, and then you would put the styles for the label in there, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, right now, we don't have that. We've got them kind of loose here. It looks like when I copied, my tabs are different. We've got them uh, loose here. And that means that any object that has these are going to get those styles. So if we didn't turn the style off, another way to turn style off, I think we had a tutorial on style as well, is you can go style with lower, uh, spell it right. <laughs> I can do it, dot clear, and that would also turn them off, but it's probably just easier to set the style brackets to empty. Okay, on we go. Now we're, uh, we're handling the snapping. So I don't know if you noticed that, but when, let's get back to something visual, huh? <laughs> Probably forget what we were doing. Uh, when we let go, it snaps back like so. So to do that, we want to record where did it start? That's the easiest way to do it. So we're just going to loop through this stuff and figure out where uh, the start X and the start Y are. Uh, and again, we're making custom properties. So there's no property on this object called start x. We're actually making it so that we can use it again later. And that's something that you start to learn as you code a bit more when, hey, maybe just store uh, my own property on that thing. Oh, oh how magical. <laughs> uh, when you need it. Uh, we could have stored a variable. So we could have made this a variable outside of the loop. So it has the proper scope, something like uh, let start x and let start y. We're going to change those values. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, we have to declare them out here. So that means they can't be cons and empty. So we're going to um, store those two. You also might be familiar with var and var. Var would work there too. And then inside, we wouldn't have stored it on the object. We could have just called, said start x is whatever the object's x is and start y is whatever the object's x. And down below, when we go to use it, we would just use the variables rather than on the object. But if you have more than one variable, as, as we do here, actually. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's right. That would, that would break, wouldn't it? Because we, we're, we've got more objects than just one object. So it'd have to be like start label one x, start label two x, start label three x, and start label one y, and start, you know, so that would be annoying, wouldn't it, to have all those variable names up there. So that's why we didn't do it that way. Instead, we're just storing it right on the object. Because if you think about it, the start x is a property of the object. We're saying, hey, remember, this is a property of you, something that that belongs to you or you have or that relates to you. And that's its starting position in this case. 
All right, so another trick of snapping, and that's why we did that. Uh, that's why we did that zim bit on snapping, or on you know that, that we added that. Actually, there's a separate zim bits on snapping specifically, because that's quite a common thing that we do, and that's the trick. We sort of make its own start x and start y on that. All right, all of this stuff you don't have to do, and it might have just been better to take that off all this ticker stuff and shape stuff. But basically what that's doing is it's dynamically drawing the line. So what we're looking at right here is the, the red line in behind there. So how we do that is we put a shape on the stage, on the whole stage there that's as big as the stage. And then as we pick this up and move it, we are constantly redrawing a line from its start X and start Y to where it currently is. Uh, well, one of the problems is the start X and start Y is, is relative to this um, tile right here. So these three things are inside a container in a tile. And if you recall, that means their zero, zero is kind of like right here of the container. And their start X and start Y are relative to the zero, zero inside the container. The, the shape that we just put on the stage is this whole, it's whole big and it's zero, zero is up here. So that means we can't just draw a line from the start X and start Y. It has to be the location of this tile plus the start X and plus, so which is here, plus the start X and plus Y, and that'll give us that place. But a better way to do that is with these uh, local to globals, global to locals, local to local things. And that's usually one of the more complicated parts of interactive media. So that's why I'm saying, you know, maybe, I, <laughs> maybe we should have left that out of the example. But here, if you want to take a look at it, well, I'll just go through it quickly. We're making a new shape. We're adding it to the stage. We're putting it one level under. When we add something to the stage, it just comes up to the top. We're putting it one level under so that it goes underneath this last tile that we made. That's the la this, this thing down here is the last tile that we made. It's the top thing on the stage. Well, when we pick this up, we want the shape to be underneath that. So we put it one level or layer underneath. That's how we handle it in Zim with the ORD. That could be minus two, minus three, etc. The other thing we could have done is said add to the stage, comma, uh, stage dot num children. If I could spell it, num children minus one. That's what we, oh, uh, minus one, minus two, actually. Num children minus one would be the highest thing on the stage. Minus two would put it one under. So, uh, you know, obviously that's a bit more annoying, isn't it? Okay, so we've added the shape, great. And we're, what are we doing here? Objects dot on mouse down. Okay, so when objects is the, what is objects? Objects dot loop, objects is the tile of the objects list. Okay, so these are the targets and the objects. Targets and the objects, okay. So when we press on the objects, we're going to find out which one we pressed on by asking for the e dot current target, or sorry, e dot target. E dot current target would be the objects uh, container. But E dot target would give us what one specifically in there we pressed on, and we're storing that in current shape just so that we can use it in this ticker right here. So the ticker is a create jest way of um, having a sort of a timeline constantly animated. Blah, 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 blah. So the ticker runs at request animation frame, which is synced to the refresh rate of the monitor. Oh, how wonderful. It makes very smooth animation and stuff like that. And CreateJS has that, but we do it a little bit differently. We have a single ticker. CreateJS has multiple tickers. That, well, it has a single ticker too, but you keep, anyway, I don't know. Similar, but different. And we have this add right here which will um, add this function to the ticker, which means it runs kind of constantly. And our ticker, okay, that's the difference, I guess. CreateJS, you can, um, when you, whenever you animate something, uh, a ticker gets made. You probably don't see that uh, when you export from animate because it's all done in the background for you. Uh, but with us, uh, or with CreateJS, you had to sort of set a ticker for each animation. With us, the animations are all into the same ticker. 
Uh, it's the same ticker that we're using here when we add something to it. So what that means is we make a single stage.update at the end of our ticker queue, and we don't repeat stage.updates. Uh, there's a danger if you were doing it in CreateJS with individual tickers for each, well, it's not, uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, an individual ticker event for each animation. You would do a stage.update in there. Well, you know, that runs the risk of multiple stage.updates. And so anyway. We've solved that problem with a single single ticker. That's why we have the add method right there, right on the ticker class. Just like math, there's math.random or math.sign or cos. There's only one math class. You don't make a new math object and put methods on that. So same with the ticker. We only we have one ticker that is a master ticker, and we would add functions to that so that a single stage dot update goes at the, the bottom of that, and never repeats. Anywho, uh, if there is a current shape, so the current shape's what we pressed on, then we are going to, right in here is all that local to global stuff. And it's, like I said, it's not very pleasant to look at. We're asking for the start X and start Y, the local position of that inside of the object's parent. So that's a bit tricky, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. And the second point will be whatever the object's x and y is, wherever it is, inside the parent, that's what we're sending to the global coordinate system. So point one and point two now become these points right here, but in the global uh, coordinate system. So then we clear our shape. We should set the shape style to reds, and that's its stroke style, and then a stroke thickness of four. And we move, we, we move the shape. So the shape is cleared. That means every time in this ticker, brrr, constantly, it's clearing the shape. It's moving it to whatever the point one's X and Y is. And then it's drawing a line to whatever the point two. So from its start X and Y to its X and Y. But those are in the global coordinates. All right, not too bad, huh? So that's us redrawing the shape when we press up we have to clear that shape so that it goes away. Otherwise, it sticks around. And we set the current shape to null. So if you didn't want, or if you weren't wanting that shape at all, you go like this. Pop, gone, all that. Pop, gone. We save it, and we go Control-Enter. And now we have picking up the square. Still snaps back. We might want to adjust the snapping because it's doing that elastic thing. And when it doesn't, <laughs> when it's not attached to an elastic, it's you know maybe a little bit much. Uh, I can show you how to do that in just a second. But anyway, there it is on the square. Woohoo! Here it is on the triangle. Waha! And there it is on the circle. And a replay. Whoop. Uh, got it wrong. Okay. So that's. That would get rid of all that line stuff and make it maybe a bit easier for you, and perhaps you don't even want the line. So once again, that was getting rid of all of the current shape there and the ticker.add and getting rid of these two things where it says for line. All right, so when we press up, we want to test to see if the object is hitting. All right, big stretch, you guys. Um, this is perhaps why the question is how to make this matching game, because there's a fair bit involved in this. It's it's very classic interactive media that's been around through Flash, been around through Director before that. Uh, and I've been doing this uh, all the way through that, <laughs> all the way with those ones. I did a, a CD-ROM on Marshall McLuhan back in 1996, and I did a matching game <laughs> in there, <laughs> director. Uh, same kind of stuff, same tricks that, that we're doing. Okay, so here we go. When we press up, we want to find out if um, our objects are hitting. And in Zim, we have a, a half dozen to a dozen different types of hit tests we can use. We're using a straightforward hit test of the bounds. Do the bounds of these things hit? And so what that means is if we pick this up and the bounds hit, uh, well, the bounds of that will be perfect. The triangle bounds are a little bit different. We could maybe do that. There, the bounds hit. And you see that? It didn't quite hit. See that? So I've got the bounds of the circle. The bounds of this thing that I'm dragging is a rectangle. And the bounds of the circle is a rectangle. And if I intersect the rectangles, like right here, that will count as hitting. 
You may want intersecting here, but I think for this game, it really doesn't matter too much. You can also do a inter intersect on the registration point, and that would mean it have to be more here. You can do a hit test uh, circle rect, and that would be perfect for this. For the hit test triangle, let's just do a refresh on that. For the hit test of the triangle to see if it's hitting this triangle, what you would do is a um, hit test rect. Yeah, hit test rect. And what that does is it puts points around this rectangle right here that I'm dragging, and it checks it against an unusual shape. So it checks to see if any of the points around this rectangle is hitting the, the actual shape there. So that's another hit test in Zim that you have. Um, if this thing that we were dragging was a circular shape, you could do hit test circle, and that would check to see if points around the circle were hitting any weird looking shape. There's hit test circles, hit test bounds does rectangles, hit test grid, hit test path, hit test. So there's a whole bunch of different hit tests, and I think we did a previous tutorial on those most likely. Okay, so anyway, we're just doing a simple one with are the bounds matching. So e.target, so whatever we're, we've just pressed up on, whatever we've just pressed up on is the e.target. We're calling that now object to make it a little bit easier. So is the object that we just pressed up on, uh, is it hitting our match, the object's match? Get it? So this one right here is the e.target. When I press up, that's the e.target, and we're asking if the e.target is hitting the match property of the e.target. Remember how we put the match on it? So this square has that one matching. Not the triangle, not the circle, but that. So if it hit tests that one, then we're good. So if it hit tests that one, we're going to locate the uh, object at the same place as the object match. I bet you we center reg these, did we? Let's have a look. Center reg. Oh, that's the old way of doing it. We now have reg and center. Okay, so the old way right there is we have a center reg style available that matches the, our method that centers reg. When we center reg, it will automatically, if we just said true there, it would center the registration point, but it would also add it to the stage because that's what center reg does. So we don't want to add it to the stage because we want to tile it first. Um, anyway, so we put add colon false in there, which tells it not to, but that was a bit cumbersome. So now we have just reg and we can say center here and that's it's easier. So we'll zip this example up and you can grab the example and look through it yourself as well. Uh, then it will have the right uh, words there. So that's good. Let's just do a test on that, make sure it still works. And those all look good. And will this go to the, because we've centered the registration, what loc will do, loc positions the registration point and there's a nice fast way. If we just want to loc this thing that I'm dragging at that other thing, I just say loc this thing that I'm dragging, uh, round brackets square, or whatever it is. And sure enough, that has located in the center. Do you want to see what that would look like if we didn't center reg it? Okay, so let's comment that out. And we refresh. Probably the tiling will work fine. So the tiling worked fine because we probably put a line of center on the tile. Mm, I guess not. Oh, we don't have to. Yeah, uh, the, the shapes are close enough in size that the lines don't matter. Otherwise, we might have wanted to. Anyway, there they are. And let's drop the this rectangle onto the circle. Hmm, well, that looked all right, actually. And onto the triangle, that also looked all right. So what happened here? Just a second. I was expecting my center ridges to not be um, uh, working properly. So if it located it at the, it would have, should have located the registration point, which is the top left corner, at the registration. Oh, I didn't refresh. Control enter. Sorry. I don't work in Adobe Animate most of the time. I'm used to just having a refresh on this thing, update it to the code. So here we go. Oh, okay. Well, there it is, not centered. So the, first of all, the circle isn't going to the right, or sorry, not the circle. The line is not going to the right place. 
Uh, let's drop it on the circle. Okay, now it put the left-hand corner, top left corner of that in the center of the circle. The triangle will do something similar. Put that there, and the square will put this corner against that corner up here. And so we drop it. There we go! Okay, so not, not too nicely aligned, huh? So it's sort of important that we uh, line the registration point there. <coughs> Oops, <laughs> I can do it. And there she goes. Oh, I'm so cold downstairs. <laughs> Haven't put the heater on today and my hands are so cold I can hardly, hardly type. They're like uh, typing with, uh, I don't know, pencils or something. All right, so where were we? <laughs> what a happy day it is, huh? We're dropping down here. Okay, so our, our loc right here, normally loc is loc with x and y, so we would put a 100 comma 100. You know, this would position or locate the registration point at 100, 100. Uh, but we have a shortcut. If we just say loc at some other object that are, has an x and y, it will locate it at the same x and y. Oh, wonderful. We also don't want to pick that up again. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, you probably didn't, but let's... Um, I can't just refresh this. <laughs> See, that's what I'm used to. I've, I've saved the file. I've saved, saved the uh, animate file. I'm used to just refresh here. But no, is there a way to do that? Maybe you can tell me in the comments. Is there a way that I don't have to keep on getting a different sort of one of these showing up and I can just refresh and it will... Uh, I don't know. I guess there isn't. So I'm going to go Control-Enter now rather than just save. Come back here. And, um, right, if I pick up the circle here, I can't pick that up again. I can pick these guys up, but I can't pick that up once I've dropped it. So we have to take care of that. And we can take care of that easily by saying no mouse. And that no mouse is just a shortcut to something which is less or more cumbersome. Object dot mouse enabled equals false. But if that has anything in it, if there are children in it, you would have to go also object dot mouse children equals false. And indeed, the Zim shapes and Zim labels and stuff like that, I guess it's the label I'm picking up. The label does have things inside it. The label is a, actually a container that has a text thing in it and a background in it and, and stuff. So, um, that just became annoying to have to remind people to set both of those things. So we made a little helper function right there called no mouse, and there's one called mouse. So it'd be mouse round brackets that will set it so that it will receive the mouse. No mouse will take it away. Okay, so we don't need to do that anymore. Yay! We want to remove whatever we've matched. So the object.match remove from. Isn't this handy? Because we've only picked up the thing that we're dragging, we've only picked up this. So how do we know what to do with that other thing? Well, it was all because we set up a match property that points to that other thing. So we can check to see if we're hitting the other thing. We can locate our current object at the other thing, and we can remove the other thing. So here we are, remove from, we'll remove that. Uh, by the way, note that um, these things are chainable, what we've got here. So see how we're chaining things? Almost everything we do in Zim is chainable like that, except for the on method, which isn't chainable because you've got to, that will return uh, an ID so that you can turn it off. But even there, on is for events, um, like on click, we made a chainable tap. So tap, call this function. Uh, if we had on change for many of our, uh, many of our components will change like a dial and a slider. We have this on chain. Well, we can't chain the on, so that was annoying. So we made a change, a chainable change method. When it changes, call this function. So uh, we can still keep our chaining. Chaining is what helps Zim be really, really small in terms of size, because we don't have to keep on repeating things. So once you get used to chaining, it is magical and wonderful. Oops. And so one of the things you may be used to is things like mm, stage.addChild. Well, this is the wrong way. That won't chain uh, object. 
So you see, we make the object. So const object equals a new circle or something like that. Uh, circle. There we go. There's a new circle. Stage dot add child. The objects to be able to. We we could I suppose put that right in there. But if we did, if we wanted to do other things to this as well, um, uh, like drag it or something like that. Dot drag. It, it just works better this way. Dot add to. So we have an add to, which means we don't even need this, which means we don't even need this. That that does it. So add to chains adding to the stage right on the object. We don't have to have two separate statements where we make the object and we then add child. So we never really use add child anymore. We use add to. Add to just puts it whatever x is, x and y is, but then we've got loc, which is allows us to specify the x and y. We have pose, which allows us to specify um, the distance from around all the edges or the centers. And speaking of center, we've got center and we've got center ridge. So all those are all those will add it to the stage. We never really need add child anymore. <clears throat> but what was I talking about here? Oh, and so we have a remove from as well. So we don't have a stage dot remove child. Instead, we have a chainable remove from. We don't have to specify what we're removing it from, the stage or whatever container, because if you think about it, the object is always in its parent, so we just remove it from its parent. <laughs> it makes it easier and don't have to think about it. Although it is a little bit awkward reading, hey, just remove that. Uh, from what? Well, from whatever his parent is. And then we're locating the emitter at the object, so that's handy. Uh, and we're spurting. So we made an emitter right here. There's the emitter. Don't worry about making it after we called this. This is when we press up, so that'll happen much later. We happen to make the emitter here. If it makes you feel better, we can move the emitter up. Uh-oh, I'm spotting some old code. Const emitter. And let's see. So we've moved that up. That's fine. And when we made the emitter, we're choosing what to emit. There's a new circle. Here's some of that ZimV stuff where we're randomly picking a couple, couple from a couple colors. Each time we emit, we, it will grab one of those colors and emit it. <clears throat> We've told the emitter to start pause true. So that's our trick. If we made an emitter uh, and it were added to the stage, that's, I guess, another thing. We could make the emitter and don't add it to the stage, but then it's just emitting for no reason. So we start it paused like that, and then whenever we want to make that emitter emit something, we spurt it. So we've done we've done an emitter in another tutorial as well. And there's that special loc trick where we just locate it at the object. That will take the x and y of the emitter, which is in the center, locate it at the object, which happens to be center reg, so we're good. And this was for the line to make sure the clear line. And oh, now we test for ending the game. So we're kind of done, uh, aside from the snapback. Maybe before we look at seeing if we end the game, let's just look at what happens if the object is not hitting. So if, if we're, or sorry, if we're not hitting the match. So if we're hitting the match, we remove the match, we put the emitter there. Great. If we're not hitting, so else snap back, we want to make sure that we can't animate that object quite yet. Okay, because there is a possibility that as it's animating back to where we're going, we might pick it up and then it's trying to pick up and drag and animate at the same time and it might conflict. So we, these are small glitches that you know, may have been fixed at some point. You might not think about it until you realize that there's a glitch. You might not ever realize there's a glitch. <laughs> it would be broken forever and people are out there, you know, having something broken slightly. Uh, but anyway, we're saying don't let them pick that up. <clears throat> Although, didn't we set a no mouse somewhere else? I can't remember where that was. When we pick it up and we're dragging it, we definitely want to move it around and mouse it. From no mouse, yeah. So 
object look uh, we are no mousing the object there and objects ah okay so that's a different thing we put the no mouse on all of the objects saying that as this is coming snapping back don't allow them to drag any other thing and i'm not sure exactly why but that's fine. <clears throat> all right so and we're going to turn that back on and what we're doing is we're animating the object back to its start x and start y isn't that handy so we're animating the x and the y of the object back to the start x and start y that's doing the snapping you don't have to animate you could have just said <clears throat> object dot x is equal or actually we could just loc yeah okay so object dot loc we could use x and y too and the object dot start x comma object dot start y oh, hey, where'd that bracket go okay don't animate there might be a few uh i can't comment out automatically all right let's see what this will do then there might be a couple other things in there we needed to do that we didn't do and i don't know for sure oh. Hmm. Almost, oh yeah like turn back on <laughs> right okay turn back on the mouse that snapped so quickly that we almost didn't tell note that the time is only 0.5 seconds but uh we're just wanting to be fancy as a matter of fact Quite often with Snap, I've just said, oh, I can't even tell the difference. So let's just set it back to an X and Y. If there's ever any problems with the animating back to a certain place, just set it back and people think, oh, look at this responsive. Look at how fast that snapped back. But it's kind of nice to have a bit of time. We could do a slow time. Do you want to see what that looks like? That might be more impressive. <laughs> Our other one just snapped so quickly we couldn't really tell the difference. So there it is. Whoa. Wow, wow, wow. So that's a slow snap. I'm not sure I like it because we get to see the string kind of go on both sides of that thing. It also is stopping, the, the, the elastic is a longer animation and that means we can't get back to pick these other ones up. I'm not totally sure why we made it so we can't pick up two. Oh, say, ah, that was it. We've only got one shape. So we're drawing the line to this shape. If I pick, oh crap. <laughs> if I pick that up, if I drop it while that line's there and pick up the next one, now the line leaves the earlier one. It leaves this one. Oh, I think we could try it if we don't take off the mousing. Okay, so let's not do the mouse and let's not do this mouse. We haven't quite seen this yet. And let's have a look. <clears throat> so we pick that up. Oh, oh I refreshed. Control enter. Come back here. And I pick that up. Uh, yeah, it goes away. Not that you can, you have to pick it up quickly. But that, that red line. Ooh, yeah, it started, it glitched on me. <laughs> it, there, there's the glitch. And so what happened is there used to be a red line here but it got drawn to that other one maybe it's more like the current object is is glitching there but anyway there there was a glitch if that happens so we kind of went all ah, right no no touching the other ones until this one finishes animating we don't want that long of an animation on it anyway and let's carry on so we animated to a start x and start y we set a small time for that and there's the elastic which is fun so when we're done animating, call this function. So that's, this is the function to call when we're done. And let's make that arrow function now for our modern, oh, our modern code. So there's our arrow function. Which way do you like it? Spaces or no spaces? I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're turning back on the objects so that we can drag them. And we set the current shape to null, which is, I think, determining in here in the ticker which one's getting the line. Okay. So this would be the, is that our ticker? Yeah. Nope, that's the end, ah, that's the test. And our ticker, there's the ticker. 
And so our current shape is what's being animated. So that may have been a problem. If we click on something else, the current shape becomes something else. Uh, hmm. Anyway, whatever. All right, so that was snapping back. And here is ending the game now. So if there's no more children, and I was going to say in the last, like when we got to this press up, we was taking a big sigh saying all sorts of stuff going on. Huh? Uh, so if you need to take a break at any time, this has been a long one. If you need, we, we do these things called Zim Explorer, and the Zim Explorer takes you through much like this, takes you through uh, more complete type apps or bigger things. Uh, talking through the code. And anytime you feel like getting a cookie, you're welcome to go out and get a cookie, put this on pause and come back. I'm so glad that you're here with us. All this stuff is important. All this stuff is wonderful and magical. Uh, Zim actually makes it a lot easier than it would be otherwise. It may seem like a lot of things to you, but it would be double that if, if we didn't have Zim. And so I'm glad you're here. I uh, hope this is helping. But, like I said, you're welcome to grab a cookie at any time. I'm used to this. I'm used to talking code for three hours. I could talk code three hours without a break. No problem. You guys listening, I'm not sure it's the same way. <laughs> All right. So we were just checking, how do we end the game? All right. So if you're back from your cookie break, that's great. Welcome back. So if the targets num children, so this is how many targets we have, is equal to zero, because each time we're removing them. So watch this. If I get the square, now the num children are two. There's two targets. If I hit the circle, now there's one target. And if I hit the triangle, now there are no targets. So we want to make that animation that we just saw. And we want to bring up the replay button and make all that stuff work. So. Oops. Dragging. If we have no more children left, then we're going to objects.animate. This is a bit neat. Uh, a bit neat. <laughs> I was going to say a bit tricky, but I decided to, to, to treat it on the positive side. This is neat. <laughs> I ended up with a bit neat. Uh, we're animating the property. Uh, well, we're adding a bunch of things here. We're animating based on that time. We're rewind and looping, and we're only looping twice. Uh, I think these days if we add a loop count, it will say, ah, I know you're looping. We don't need whether we're looping. But here's the trick right there, sequence point one. So if we didn't, if we didn't do the sequence point one, let's comment that out and go control enter. Yeah, yeah, I remember this time. It's just because I, I don't usually, I, I work usually in an editor and I don't quite work in the Adobe Animate um, system anymore. I, I certainly used to, and I would control enter my heart out, you know, and I would always know to control enter to see the next thing. But now that I'm sort of in just an outside editor, uh, I just save it and then refresh, save and refresh, and that does it. But here, that doesn't do it for me. I to, well, okay, that's enough. You guys know it makes me have all of these matching things. Okay, so here we are. What were we testing again? I <laughs> can't remember. I uh, picked that up and I drop it on the square. Oh, right. We're going to watch. When we win here, when we're, when we're done, it's now going to just scale the whole tile rather than the individual ones in sequence. Which doesn't look that great, does it? Because the whole tile itself is not center regged. If the tile itself were center regged, then it would all get bigger from the center ridge, I guess. That would be my guess. So if we go back up to where we made the tiles there. <clears throat> There's the tile. We positioned it, but we didn't center the registration point. So that would look like this. Dot reg. If we were just center regging the tile rather than positioning it, another way to do this would be just center reg dot move, M-O-V, uh, 0, 200. All right, so we're going to do it two ways here. That's center. There we are centering the reg, but still positioning it. Uh, alternatively, we could have done, done dot center reg like that, dot move. This is how we used to do it all the time, 200. Okay, so don't, don't do these two here. But just center the registration and then move it up um, 200. And that would look the same. That would do the same thing. But 
we then added the pose where we can pose from the center. So we're basically saying move it up 200 after we positioned it in the center. And there we are saying center the registration point. So let's check that out again here. We have to win square, circle, triangle. <laughs> Crap, <laughs> didn't work. I centered right the wrong one, <laughs> didn't I? Uh, this is the targets. No, that was the targets. Um, hmm, let's see the target list. Uh, the targets are the things we're dropping on, right? Objects, targets. And so we positioned it, center regged. Okay, let's go. That that should have, um, well, what we can do is just do a check on that. Make sure. I wonder if the resets. Didn't, let's do a dot outline. So that's the tile dot outline here. Or on the next line, dot out line. There we go. And make sure that that tile, it did indeed get, oh, I refreshed. Okay. So maybe I just did a refresh on that instead of a control end. <clears throat> There's the registration point centered. That's that round circles registration point. There's our tile. And let's try and win this again. But all those things are popping up. They're not animating from the center. That's uh, how I would expect. They're almost like they're animating from the bottom. So something somewhere has gone awry. Let's have a look and see what we're doing. Oh, I'm a dingbat. It's these three things. These three things uh, are in a, a tile down here to start. Remember, so we're, anim we're not animating, even though it's up here <laughs> where this is, we're animating these things are in a tile down here. So they're the whole this whole tile down here, even though we've dragged it up here, the whole tile is down here and it's animating from the location of this, which means that they're going way up in the air. Okay, never mind then. Great, so uh, if we had indeed here if we had indeed um, animated these guys then it would have animated about the center and grown bigger around the center what we were trying to demonstrate here is the series so we can animate in series so rather than animate the whole of the container we're going to animate each thing in the container in a series sorry a sequence my apologies. There's a series is when you animate one thing after another in order. A sequence is when you animate the uh, items inside a container in order. All right. So <laughs> let's get rid of all that stuff, huh? Um, where was it? Well, it doesn't matter if it's uh, if it's center regged, but we don't really need it to be anymore. And also we are not needing the outline on that. So that's good. And down below where we had each of our objects when we won the game. So end the game. Here we are. There's the sequence. So these are our final objects. Um, Okay, not the original objects. And we're going to turn the sequence back on. Okay, so you saw that it ended up, uh, the objects is the container, so the, the tile, the whole tile. And if we didn't have the sequence, it animates the whole tile. And it was animating from the registration point way down below and, and doing whatever here, increasing the scale by 1.5. But now we're doing it a sequence, and when as soon as we turn on sequence, it will animate each thing inside of the objects, which is the tile. And luckily, each thing inside those objects have a registration point in the center, so they're just going to increase in scale from that center. All right, and we don't want to refresh there. We want to control enter here and bring it on over and see if we're back in working order. So now there's the square, here's the circle, and when I drop the triangle on here, each of the elements of that of that tile, which started off down there, 
each of the elements is going to animate its scale from its registration point. And there they go. Boop, boop, boop. And did you see how this one went first, that one went second, that one went third, and so it does it in a sequence, like so. All right, we can also sequence zero, I guess, and do, would we have needed to do that? I suppose not. Uh, maybe we would have, yeah, because, yeah, if we put in a sequence of zero, they'll all kind of go at the same time, and that is still handy because it, it transfers the object from the overall tile, as you saw, that didn't work because it's way down here, to the individual items in the tile. I won't refresh, I will control enter, and now we'll check it out. So, square to square, circle to circle, and triangle to triangle, they should all three of them will get bigger at the same time. There we go, and so, so we did. All right, well, I like it kind of going with whatever we had there, a point one sequence. Replay.add2.alpha0, so we're animating in the replay button. So add it to the stage. It's already been placed, so here's the replay button. You're kind of going, oh my god, there's more. Uh, yeah, there's the replay button along with what the replay button does when we tap on it. So what we've done is we added the replay button so that we could check it out and see where it is. Then we removed it, although I suppose we could have just set the alpha to zero on it. Um, it doesn't matter too much. Here's our replay. Where was it? Right in here. Replay.add2. So if we just set the animation to zero on it, that would, or alpha of zero. Hmm. I guess we can do that. Instead of a remove from an alp zero, so a chain, chainable alpha zero, that might save us a line or two just as long as the resetting doesn't mess up. So what happens when we reset? Replay, we tap, replay, remove from. Aha, nope, replay, help, zero. All right, so that might be a simpler system. Let's try a control enter on that and see if the replay all works. So the square on the square, the, hey, I'm getting good at this. Isn't this, oh, and the triangle on the triangle, in comes the replay, good. Hit replay, goes away. Let's check one more cycle of it just to make sure. Circle, triangle. Replay animates in, replay goes away. All right, that looks good. So saved a little bit of coding there. So we're bringing back, so right in here, we animate the replays alpha up to one after we wait. So there's waiting one second and then animate just so that you can do things in order. When you animate, you guys are using Adobe Animate, you probably know. If we're animating these things, circle and triangle, these things are all busy animating. We don't want to compete necessarily. Maybe 0.5 seconds would have been fine for that. So let people see this animate and then bring in uh, the replay or s step it a little bit, you know, maybe a wait of 0.5 seconds. What do you think? 0.5 seconds, and we refresh here. Oh, no, we don't refresh there. We control enter. Well, now you know what happens. I go back to coding in my editor, and I keep on hitting control enter. <laughs> Luckily, it doesn't do anything in my editor, really. Uh, so here they are, square. This is a 0.5 second waiting now before that button pops in. Eh, fine. What do you think? Which one do you like better? Yeah, we also have an emitter going at the same time too, and that emitter will end and then the replay comes up. Okay, I think we're fine. We're nearly done, folks. Yay. We have, uh, oh, I shouldn't say, this is nothing like um, telling stories, huh? but we've got this politician up here in Canada that most people in their right mind don't like. Oh, actually, most people in the right mind <laughs> would like. Most people in the left, left mind don't like. Anyway, that politician keeps on calling people folks because they want you to think that they're working for, you know, they, oh, we love you. You are the folks. Oh, yes. Anyway, so now apparently when I teach, people don't like it when I use the word folks because it reminds, reminds them of that guy. <laughs> 
That's that's too bad. I'm an old hippie, you know. I have uh, folks, you know, folk songs and stuff. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with the word folks. Uh, anyway, we're nearly done, folks. So, snapping back. What have we seen? We've seen the snapping back. There's the replay animating in. What do we do when we... Uh, so there's us making that replay button ahead of time. Oh, with a var. <laughs> Const. Caught ya. Any other vars hanging around? No. What about... Oh, there's a function. Hmm. An anonymous function. We can use the, an arrow function without all that stuff. Good. And any other ones like that? Just a little peek around the tap. So there's that tap we were talking about where we can chain on the tap instead of doing a click event and right onto that re replay button. So we only need the replay button because we're operating on it outside up here. Otherwise, we've basically got everything chained right onto that replay button. When we tap, <laughs> looks odd we turn it itself uh, back to zero we could animate it out if we wanted to but didn't bother we're looping through so restarting is always tricky as it says here in this message so we gotta reset stuff what we could do uh, the sort of poor man's research uh, <laughs> restart is zgo zgo goes to a url and just go to whatever your url is uh which i don't know what is I think it was just called match here, so I better change that. Uh, what did I call it? How can we tell? Matching.fla. Okay, so it's probably making a matching.html. Um, right, so that is go is a sh little short form. We've got all these little short things like zog and zum and zim. Z well, we are zim. Zid. There's these other ones that mean things. Go is, uh, it goes to that. URL, and that would just restart the whole thing, huh? <laughs> you know, hey, do you want to see that? So we don't do any of this stuff, mm, except we might need the stage.update because we've set the replay to zero. There's probably other things animating. I doubt we need that. But I'm going to comment out all of what? All of this. Right click, comment selection, and bring back our short little one-liner. Just restart the page or reload the page. And we go control enter. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work because where is this saved? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, refresh here. It, it should work. If you put this up on a website, it would work. A triangle, a square, and a circle. And replay. Hey, it worked. <laughs> oh, uh, or did it? I don't, I don't know. Let's make sure I control enter. Control enter. It's a danger. Square, circle, and triangle. Yeah. Oh, no, here's the replay. Yeah, it worked. Okay. Oh, there it is. It's called matching. Okay, so it, that time it just added matching to, to it, I think. I don't remember seeing it when I first had it there. But anyway, there it is. It just re recalled the site. So that's often a very easy way to restart. But... If you want, you can do the manually manual restarting of all of this stuff. This is a relatively straightforward game. And you can see that there's still some things that we have to do. We're going to loop through all of the objects and animate them back to their starting position in a certain amount of time with a back out ease. I like the back out ease moving it around. And when we're done, we will turn on the mouse. So I suppose it had a no mouse left over still somewhere. So that's animating everything back. We're going to reshuffle the target list as we did before. We remove all of the target objects. Mm, yeah, this just shuffles the array. So we're removing them and then we're animating them back in into their new order. So we tiled them again, position that tile. What did we do with the last tile? Targets.remove from. Targets is now a new tile. So we just retiled in the, ah, yeah, in the new order. We would now use a dispose here for that. So a remove from would remove it. And as long as we've used the same variable name, it'll probably take it away from the garbage or take it away with the garbage collection and not leave it around. But a safer way is to dispose if you're getting rid of it for good. 
Okay, because we're just making a new tile over top of it, basically the old tile's gone. So we, in Zim 10, we really worked out dispose properly so that it, it clears it all from memory. So we would want to dispose that. Oh, wait a second. Because uh, then it will dispose the objects in it as well. And that's the target list. Yeah, I don't, no, we don't want to do that. Remove from. Okay, so disposing the, the tile would also dispose all of its children, which are the objects that are in the target list, and we would no longer have them to, to position, position in place. So the tile, which is just a container, is removed from, might hang around, but it's no big deal having an empty container just left there. You could play this game a million times and you wouldn't even notice. So I think we're good. Alrighty. We position that in the same place as before. Uh, the other option would be to kind of try and swap the I items in that, but I think that's just a little bit more difficult. So we're just re-tiling them in the right order. And then we're animating in after one second their alpha. Okay, let's have a look. We could animate them in, in a sequence. Do you want to see what that looks like? Comma, sequence colon, how about a 0.5 sequence to make it dramatic for us? And control enter. Oh, I remembered. Control enter. You ready? Square to square. Circle to... I can't even remember what we're doing. Circle to circle. What were we doing again? We're going to check to see if the alpha of these shapes up above animate in one after the other. Okay, here we go once we hit replay. <laughs> no, they don't. Ah, F12, any F12s? No F12s, something, uh, something broke. Mm, let's take off the sequence. <laughs> they, I would have thought they would have. Um, was it something else we did? I, I can't remember if we messed up anything else there, but let's just try taking out the sequence and see if that's that. Nothing like getting to an hour long video and having a bug right at the end of it. The very last thing we try, the very last statement and replay. <laughs> they all had it. They all animated in just fine. But when we put in the sequence, they didn't. Sequence of 0.5 on the tile with an alpha of zero on the bottom. Why would that have broken it? I don't know. There we go. Can't be perfect, can we? Um, there's probably a reason that I'll find out after. I'll leave a comment in the uh, down below in the, the video if, if I figure it out. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. It's been long enough. And seriously, I think, wasn't that just the last, the very last thing we were going to do? Very last thing. Oh, we put a label in. There's uh, the label of the matching game sitting up top right there. Wonderful. And this has been a Zim tutorial for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract. It was a long one. What are we sitting at? Uh, an hour and 13 minutes. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, sometimes our explorers get to be that long. Let's not make it any longer. Let's just end it now. Uh, hope If you're still here, come and join us. If you're still here watching all the way through that, you certainly should come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to talk to you there and be social. You know, say hi. All right. Cheers. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.